let's get started by talking about our canvas or our support for this project. I'm using a four by four gallery edge block. So it's a perfect square and you can see gallery edge just means that it's got a thicker um, side. And I like these because they can actually stand up on their own, like on a dresser or a table or something. But you have other options. This is a mini and it comes with its own little wooden easel. Adorable. I think that one is maybe three by three. Here we've got even smaller. So this is, <laughs> and they'll also fit on the little easel as well. This is a canvas board, so you can see it's much thinner. And this one is a six by six square. As I said, I'm using the four by four canvas block or gallery edge. My variety of brushes include a background brush, that's the larger one, then two square soft brushes, and then a small detail brush. For more information on the brushes I like, you can check out the website redartliving.com and check under art classes and art supplies for more information. You'll also need a plastic bag or some plastic wrap. We'll be placing that on some wet paint later to make a textured background. Here I've got my paint colors and we'll need a pencil and eraser. As I showed you in the beginning pick, the colors that I use are pretty much the primary colors. You'll need a red. I have a dark green here. This is yellow and blue. They also make green and black and white. We'll get started by painting our background. I grabbed the larger brush and blue and white, even a dash of some green. So you can have sort of a blue green sky. We'll put most of our green towards the bottom since we'll be adding some grassy textures. And I did paint my sides. It helps to have a blow dryer nearby. With acrylic paint especially, we paint in layers and we need one layer to be dry before we start the next. So here, I just blow dried our first layer and washed my brush. Okay, we're back and my painting is dry and I've taken my largest brush and I'm applying a little bit of the dark green as well as some of the blue, maybe a blue green if you wanted to mix your blue and yellow together, a dash of white. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to use your plastic bag or your plastic wrap to create some fun textures. It'll be a nice background for the grassy area that the ladybug, the ladybug is sitting in. So while the paint is still wet, put your plastic wrap on and do some smushing, just like we did here. You can lift up, check, and if you want to add another little smush here and there to create fun patterns. And that's what we've got here. So I actually have the painting upside down here technically. You can see I've got more green on one end and then a little more of the blue and white on another end. So I spun it around here. And this is just a fun pattern to help create those natural kinds of shapes. So from here, I'm going to paint the sides, just touch them up a little bit if I got any paint on them from when I did the plastic wrap. Make sure that you blow dry after the plastic wrap super fast and just make the, the top of your painting is dry. Arrange your painting so you can kind of decide what is the top and what is the bottom and grab your pencil and draw a circle, whatever size circle that you want for your ladybug to be. If you draw several circles in a row, it, like over and over, you'll kind of get what the shape should look like. And then you can always erase or it'll be covered with paint anyway. For the top, his head on your ladybug, it's just a half circle. We're gonna take some white and just fill in those the two circles, the full circle and the half circle. Kind of snowman style, like a body with a head on top. It's just that our head in this case is a half circle.
my snowman style ladybug is dry now. So I am grabbing my red and applying it to the body. Just one coat. You don't need to overpaint it. Just do one coat. If you decide that you wanted your red to be more consistent or if it needed to be darker for some reason, we will be adding additional layers or you could blow dry it and just do a second coat. It's really going to depend on the brand of paint you use and how dark of a red that you're using. Later on, we'll of course darken it up by adding some shadows. So there's no worries if you feel like it's not quite enough of a coverage, we'll definitely be adding more paint. But of course, if you do want to add a second layer, we always blow dry in the middle. If you start to add paint without the drying of the layer, you can actually remove paint and things start to get sticky and um, it messes with your coloring. From here, I'm just grabbing the black and doing the head. And I'll just be careful to paint neatly around the red since it is still wet. Let's let our ladybug dry and create some shadows underneath him with our darker green. Now I had dark green in its own too, but you could mix your blue and your yellow and then add just a dash of black. Or if you make blue and yellow make green and add the tiniest dash of red, you'll also darken your green up because red is a complement to green and therefore when you mix complementary colors, you end up darkening. Uh, they, it's um, darkening each other. So take your green, make it dark, either with a dot of black or with a dot of red. This is just a shadow as if he's creating a shadow and the grassy area is therefore gotten darker under around him. You can kind of just take your brush. I dipped it in a little bit of water and then smushed it around. Remember, we've got quite a fun pattern because of the plastic bag and eventually we're adding grass. So it's just one layer after another that's going to be the final look. This doesn't have to look like a perfect grass or a perfect um, painting at this point because we have so many layers that when they're all done and our one painting will make sense. So no panicking in the middle of the painting allowed. Let's grab your blow dryer. Be sure that that layer of green you just added as well as the red and the whole painting is dry. I've got a dry painting and I'm still working in the same dark green that I did before. So if you need to make a little more with some black or red, go ahead. And I want to paint a thin line around the body of the ladybug just to be a thin shadow. I'm using the smallest brush I have. It's a tiny round detail brush, just to give the element of 3D to show that he is raised up enough to create a shadow under his body in the grass. It's time to create a bit of dark red. Take the tiniest bit of black. Remember black is a dominant color, obviously. So just take a bit of red and add a bit of black, mostly red, and you'll get sort of a burgundy, um, almost a purpley red. It looks really nice. And swoosh it <laughs> onto your ladybug to give it a little bit of a darker look. You don't need a lot of paint. Uh, maybe even a dash of water, just so it's, it's not too sticky because you want this to be rather see-through. And take that around. We're acting like the left side of the circle here in the painting is going to be in shadow. And then I'll have a highlight on the right side 
of the ladybug's body. So if you're ready to move on with the lighter side, wash your brush and with a clean brush, take a dab of white and create just a bit of a lighter red, not so much white that you end up with a pink ladybug though. Then I, I swoop that lighter red on the right side so that what you end up with is a circle that is half darker red or almost three quarters of a darker red. And then the right, you can see that little bit on the right top that is a lighter red. Then you'll wash your brush, dab it with like a paper towel, and then blend the two together, the lighter side and the darker side. Just a little bit in the middle. So let's see how we're putting the two together. I pick up some of the red only to go over in the middle. So it ends up being dark on the left, red, plain red in the middle, and then the red with the white on the right side. It's kind of a go back and forth when you're, you're trying to find your lights and your darks and what's just right. Here I made a little bit extra darker red and decided I wanted to do another layer of dark along the bottom left side of the ladybug. So I did that swoosh with my brush and then I washed my brush and then go back in and blend. Creating form, like to get the ladybug to look 3D is really going back and forth with light, medium, and dark paint. And you can see here with that clean brush and I blended, I'm starting to get a better transition. Dab a little bit of dark red look like a shadow and give the ladybug the 3D effect. I am liking the way this looks. It's time to wash your brush and make a bit of light blue. I've decided I want the painting to have a little more almost like sky on the top, so I'm just going to muddle in tap here and there some blue and white above the ladybug so that we've still got our green stuff going on the bottom like it's grass and remember we're adding actual grass blades later but this is a little light blue maybe a little white here and there just think of little paint scribbles going up on the top above the ladybug Let's do a check to make sure that the ladybug is dry and grab your thin, fine round brush and grab a little bit of black, maybe even a dot of water. You can see it's definitely a little bit thinner and do the line in the middle of the ladybug. It's a bit curved, which will add to the three dimensionality again. From there, I'm adding my black polka dots and these aren't actually, if you look at a real ladybug, their circle dots aren't perfect circles. You could certainly make them perfect circles or they can be a little wonky. It's really up to you, um, just what style you're choosing for your painting. I did want different size uh, splotches. I also wanted the dots to be half off. So these ones I'm doing in the bottom are half circles on in some cases. I like the idea of big and small because then the smaller dots look like they're farther away and it helps with our three dimension, um, the trying to create three dimensionality in the painting. So just have fun, add some dots. How many? I don't know. It's really up to you and it would be based on what your ladybug looked like, like how big you made your circle or just what style you're looking for. Here it's all about creating darker shadows. 
I've made some more of that dark red. Remember, I just added a bit of black to my red. You could also add a bit of green and it'll darken up your red. And then actually on the ladybug, I took my thin line and did just a very thin, dark line around the bottom of the ladybug, still trying to get more shadows around the backside too. He's really starting to look 3D and some of that comes from just having that dark um, shadow on the left side. I also took a bit of blue and um, made a dark green using some of the blue. So I washed my brush first and then I added a little bit of the blue straight into the dark green that I already had. So it's a dark blue green. And again, now I'm going on the outside. So when I did the red just now, it was actually on the ladybug. This thin line is off the ladybug in the grass and it's just again accentuating the cast shadow that the ladybug creates. So if you've got a shadow, then you need a highlight. Here I've got my small square brush and a bit of white and I'm just doing a swoosh on the body on the right side and a swoosh on it, the head. Just imagine it being a glare because there's just some brightness there, sunlight. Grab your thin detail brush for our next step. Add a little bit of water to your black and a bit of a wiggle coming from the head. Two antennas. Okay, quick lesson on how to paint grass. I've got my smallest brush and I'm pushing a little more at the bottom and then lifting up with my brush at the top. If you keep the same pressure the whole time, you end up with very fat grass usually. Also, it helps to hold your brush closer to 90 degrees, so you're only using the tip. Here you'll see this grass has got a wiggle, and often it ends up looking like seaweed. So for our grass, we want to go up and kind of curve to the left or the right, so the blades look like they're a little more natural and a little longer like this lawn needs to be mowed. So feel free to get a little long with your grass, but definitely take it for a curve rather than a wiggle. A little more of a push at the bottom and then slowly lift up the brush. It helps to be fast with this. Slow grass doesn't work out. Fast is going to make you more successful. So here I'm taking a bit of white. I've got my different kinds of greens, dark greens, light greens, blue greens, uh, yellow greens, even closer to a white. So go ahead and make your colors that you like, even add a dash of water because the paint slides and glides a little better when there's water in it, just a tad. So from the bottom, we'll do that 90 degrees, just the tip and a little up flick, keeping everything very thin. The best way for your grass to look like it has dimension in it is to have lights and darks and medium shades of green, even blue greens and white. So you could do a pass of several bits of dark grass, then change your color, grab a different kind of green and go over top. Remember dimension also is created not just with shadows, but with layers when something is in front of something else. So when I put a different shade of green on top of a previous pass of grass, it looks like grass is in front of grass. Even as we do this now, the blades of grass that are over top of the ladybug automatically give us some three dimension because it looks like there's grass in front of the ladybug now. So go through with one pass from the beginning of the painting to the end, then pick up a different color of green and start over, making sure that you've got long and short. I even started some of the grass, not at the bottom of the painting, but up a little bit higher. 
so it looked like the grass root was beginning in a different spot than just the bottom of the painting. Whenever you're done with your grass, you can take a look at it and decide if you needed any touch-ups. I decided that I wanted a little more pop of white, almost like clouds, or just lightening up and just playing with my sky a little bit. So if you need to do anything like that, if you wanted to touch up your sides, maybe you got paint from your hands on the side of your canvas, you could check that out. If you're looking at it realizing, you know what, my grass isn't dark enough, I want to um, add some more to that, or it's not tall enough, go ahead and do those touch-ups. I'm just adding a little bit more blue and white to my sky. Feel free to make any last minute touch-ups. I appreciate you watching. And remember, you can do this painting as many times as you'd like. It always helps to practice. I'll see you in the next class. Bye-bye.